Tiger fans, what is going on, guys? I know I haven't been on in a couple weeks. I apologize. But I absolutely had to come on and make today's video and talk about what went down. As you can read by the title of the video, the Tigers finally promote Justin Henning Malloy. And they send down Spencer Torkelson to AAA. If you would have told me this last year, that Spencer Torkelson by June was going to be in the minors again, there's no way in hell I would have believed you. After last year playing 158 games, I believe it was, or 157 games, played a lot of games, maybe even 159, hit 31 home runs, all those doubles, had the second half that he had because it was right around June, July last year where his bat really woke up. And, I mean, he was absolutely dominant the rest of the year. For, for him to get sent down again, it's kind of mind-blowing to think that this finally happened. And the writing was on the walls with this. You know, Kerry Carpenter goes down. Mark Canna was complaining about his hip. So they didn't know if it was going to – and he ended up getting a day off. You didn't know if it was going to be, you know, uh, something he had to go on the IL for. He ended up playing today in the conclusion of the Red Sox series. Um, but Torkelson's playing time had been getting cut a bunch. I mean, he's had – in May, he had a couple of little – spurts like where he finally had his first home run and then he had a couple of home runs in a couple of days and he had that one really big home run against the marlins where they won six to five now he's up to four home runs i think he still has like 12 13 14 doubles but his at bats were just getting brutal to watch you know last year you looked at a bat to a bat appearance torkelson you know, he had some ABs where he looked terrible, but, you know, he still was drawing some walks. And he had he had just a bunch of loud, loud out contact. It just is what he was really out. He was really unlucky. You know, he was squaring the ball up. A lot of really high exit velos off the bat. Just a lot of atom balls. It just is what it was. This year, it's just not been the case. It Since spring training, I mean, this has been months since spring training, he hasn't looked like he's been on time whatsoever. He's absolutely so passive at the plate right now because his timing is so terrible. He's not hitting fastballs whatsoever. Like if you – we watched him at bats of him, and Jolly Olive actually just made a video on Spencer Torkelson. It was really, really well done about how passive he's been at the plate and just watching him in general. Torkelson last year really hit fastballs well, and he hit lefties well. And this year, you just watch him go to the plate. Teams are attacking him with fastballs and then throwing him breaking balls off the plate. I mean, I came on here and I was like, I even said, I was like, it was like him and Javi, him and Javi Baez went to the same hitting coach, just chasing so many sliders off the plate, chasing breaking balls down and away, not on time for the fastball. And last year, even when he was unlucky, he was still squaring baseballs up. For as low as his average was, for as dry spells as he could go through, he still was consistently hitting balls hard, and he still was consistently getting barrels. This year, he's not hitting balls hard. He's not getting barrels. I think he's got less than 20 extra base hits, and this is a guy last year that had 31 home runs and I think almost 30 doubles. He had somewhere in the 20s for sure for doubles. So, I mean, a bunch of extra base hits. And it got to the, and AJ tried everything. I mean, you look at the Tigers organization; they tried everything. AJ had said that if he didn't start hitting, he was going to start spending more time on the bench. He hits his first home run, and then had another home run. Went quiet, perked up, had another home run, perked up a little bit, had another home run, and it went quiet. They bumped him down on the lineup. I mean, he's batting seventh. Colt Keith was sitting above him, who. We'll, we'll touch on him in another video, but man, what a good month he had in May and what a turnaround that he's had so far. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, Cole Keith was sitting ahead of him. And it was just less and less playing time. His defense this year has been unplayable uh, at times. I mean, so many balls under the mitt that he should have had. Uh, I mean, he's still scooping pretty good. His range has been terrible. Just really piss poor fielding. I think he grades out as one of the worst first basemen in all of baseball. Because last year, I remember they were talking about how good he was at scooping. And he's still good at scooping, but 
His range, his glove work, balls getting underneath this mitt. It's all been really bad this year. Really bad this year. No consistency at the plate. You could watch you watch him a game one night where like that Arizona series, you know, he has a few doubles and you know it looks like he's gonna break out of it. His at bats were looking good. And then you watch something like uh this Boston series where he strikes out three times in the game and he just looks absolutely lost at the plate. I mean, taking fastballs right down the middle and then swinging at curveballs in the dirt. Or he's getting blown away by fastballs middle in. And that was a spot last year that Torkelson absolutely destroyed. I mean, that was his bread and butter pitch. Inside inside fastballs, that's what he was destroying last year. But it needed to be done. I mean, with how the roster looks now, Kerry Carpenter is on the 15-day IL, but it's going to look like they might have the 60-day IL, this guy, because that injury he has in his back, it's going to keep him out for a while. I was reading an article, and they were talking about other players who had had this same injury, and a few of those guys, uh, depending on severity of it, a few of them missed uh, entire seasons because of the back issues. They couldn't come back from it. So here's hoping that it doesn't happen to Kerry Carpenter because, you know, the Tigers team, off offensively wise, may they perked up, but it's still too boomer bust. Like we saw the Tigers score ten plus runs, or even eight plus runs in a game, a bunch more times so far in the last month of the season. But there's still just it's too boomer bust. There's no consistency. I'd rather see them score four to six runs a game, then get shut out or score two runs, score two runs, get shut out, then drop 14, you know, and just have some kind of consistency. Because right now, it's really weird where they're at because the division is so good at the top this year with how Casey's playing and how good Cleveland is that the Tigers' chance to win the division is just about over because – you're under 500. Cleveland is off to a start where they could play 500 the rest of the way. And you would have to play at a pace that the Tigers, there's no chance they're going to play at whatsoever to even catch them. And Casey's pitching is still really good. And with the Tigers, you know, their starting staff is good right now, minus Mize and Maeda. But Jack Flaherty. Had a no hitter through six and a third the other day against the Red Sox, and Terry Scuba's doing great, just doing Scuba things. And you no know, Resolson's out there pitching great, even though his last outing was against the Red Sox. It was it was still pretty good. I mean, it, but but with how bad Torkelson was and how inconsistent and boomer bust's offense has been, bring up Justin Honey Malloy. There's no better time. Because at bats that Carpenter would get at DH can now go to, to Jay Hen. You can now put Gio Urshela or Mark Canna at first base and honestly get better defense out of either or one of those guys. Because let's face it, like I said, Torkelson's defense was super piss poor um, over the la over the season. He's been really bad. So you get an upgraded defense, you know, you say Can is your primary first baseman during this time period because I'm sure Urshela is still going to consistently play majority of third. You know, you're going to get better at bats every single day uh, out of Canna being your first baseman than you are Torkelson. Uh, so far, you're getting more power out of Mark Canna than you have Torkelson. And you can still play Andy Abanez there. You can play, I'm sure Matt Veerling could probably play there in a pinch. Matt Veerling could play anywhere. If you can play third base, I'm sure you can play first base. You got Gio Urshela that could play there. And then, because you don't have Kerry Carpenter, you know, you can really pick and choose when you want to put Jay Hen in the outfield. And you can use him as your, your primary DH, which is the sole reason why it's now June and he's finally up because he really doesn't have a defensive position. That's all we've heard about is that he can't play defense. So I'm sure, you know, now that he's on the big club and we're going to see him get some reps uh, for the time being, I don't know how long Torkelson's going to be gone for. Um, you know, it'll be good to see. So far, you know, in the, in the minors, he's hitting, I think he's hitting in the 260s. He's got six home runs, I believe, 
OBP is still great. He still gets on base a lot. I think last time I checked was two days ago. He had like 44 strikeouts to 41 walks. So his his pace is still right there. A guy that gets on base uh, pretty much as much as he strikes out. It's going to be interesting to see how he translates to the big leagues because there is swing and miss there. And, you know, when he in spring training, his power really didn't show up till after right about they demoted him to AAA because the Tigers had said he had a chance to make it out of spring. Him and Cole Keith, really, it was Cole Keith who had a chance to make it out of spring because of the contract. Because uh, Jahan really did start hit, hitting well toward the back end of spring training. But there was a lot, of, a lot of swing and miss there. There is a lot of swing and miss there. A lot of people have questioned his ability to hit breaking balls. He's now coming up to the MLB where I've said this many a times and I'm going to keep harping on it that the gap between AAA and MLB is as big as ever. So he's going to start seeing the highest velocity, the best breaking balls he's ever seen. You know, teams are going to figure out how to pitch to him uh, and expose him quick as ever. So if he's got a flaw or a weakness, you know, it's kind of like one Seal Perez where he came up and he's taking the world by storm, had he's had these multiple triples games and he had a game where he had a home run from both sides of the plate, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you see now, you know, until today, he's, he's cooled off. His averages fell down to the two fifties, two sixties. You know, he hit over 300 like he was, they, they figured it out. You know, they started throwing him uh, a few less fastballs and more breaking balls, even though he had uh, a decent game today. I, and I think he's going to bounce back because like that kid can hit, but now the here over there, you know, I'm excited to see what Malloy can do. You know, I haven't been up on on my pedestal this year about prospects. Like I said in my prior video to this one, I'm over prospects and prospect hugging. You know, um, I hope they come up and they do well and they help the team and, and contribute offensively. But, you know, I think you got Spencer Torkelson, who's a number one overall pick. And, you know, now he's down in the minors for the second time in two years. I mean, he's basically what Joe Adele has been for the Angels, except Torkelson's had, I would say, more success to this point than Adele has because Adele's been way more up and down. But, you know, uh, I, I'm just over thinking that prospects are going to come up, but it's going to change anything. It's going to change the season. I want him to succeed. I'm happy to watch him play. I've watched quite a few Mudhens games uh, since he's been on the team since last year. You know, I'm pretty aware of his game. You know, he's he's a fun at bat to watch. I'm interested to see how the walks translate at the big league level, if he's able to still keep walking at the pace and at the clip he was. Hopefully he's able to, you know, he does have some power. Hopefully he, he can pick up some of the slack that Carey's going to leave because Carey's gone and, uh, you know, provide some extra base pop. You know, it'd be nice to see a guy that's able to, you know, it, I'm sure he's probably going to bat sixth or seventh or maybe, yeah, definitely sixth or seventh. I'm sure, you know, him batting sixth or seventh, it'd be nice to maybe lengthen the bottom half of the order so so it's not so weak at the bottom half because, you know, right now it's been Torkelson, Baez, Carson Kelly, even though Carson Kelly's starting to hit a little bit more recently. We'll see how long that lasts. But, you know, it's been been Torkelson, Baez, Carson Kelly, and it's basically been one, two, three innings you know, every single time they're up because, you know, Torkelson, he had the Bash brothers with Mark, Mark McGuire and Jose Katsenko. Well, Torkelson and Baez this year have been the blind brothers because they're just up there fucking swinging at anything and striking out a boatload. So I think Torkelson's got more strikeouts than, than Javier Baez does this year too. So it's kind of weird. But neither here nor there, Tigers demote. Uh, Spencer Torkels on the AAA yet again, second time in two years. We'll see how long this lasts for. Uh, last time they did this, it was at the All Star break of 22. Uh, he didn't end up coming back until September. He was a September call up. He struggled really bad through that month of August. If you guys remember, he struggled really, really bad. And it wasn't uh, until the back half of August where he started hitting better. And then he came back up. Hit a little bit better for the month of September. Uh, I remember we, they, they played a series in Seattle where he had two home runs uh, in two games to close out the season, and he looked a little bit better. And then, of course, last year, the 31 home runs, and it looked like, okay, this guy is going to be a guy that you can pencil in, 30 home runs, he's going to put him in your three-hole, and now they're going to pencil him in as the three-hole hitter in AAA. 
I am a, a, happy for him that he's going to get some everyday at bats because Hinch just had no choice because he's so lost. He's so in between. Him getting everyday at bats, no matter how much he struggles, him seeing pitching every single day, no matter how much he struggles to get it worked out right, is the best thing for him right now. Unfortunately, with how much the Tigers have sank since their 5-0 start and how good the division is and, you know, fighting for their lives for a potential third wild card spot, which, you know, in the early June, it's a video for another time talking about how their season is potentially already almost over. But, you know, they need to get this guy straightened out because they ain't winning shit in 24 and you need to win sooner than later because it's been too long already. So, and to see how Justin Emeloy does. Again, I'm over prospects. I'm not I'm not going to put any pressure on him that he's going to do anything or he's going to change anything or they're going to go on a 25-game win streak. But I am excited to see what he does with some MLB plate appearances when you got the third deck and the lights are on. So that's all I got for you guys today. Appreciate you watching. Have a good one. Go Tigers.